The infinite universe is eternal, ageless, and has no beginning and no end. However, the nature and limitations of the human mind and brain require endings and beginnings and cannot perceive or comprehend what it can't comprehend. Thus, most humans believe the universe and that life itself has a beginning and an end. Only life gives rise to life, and life may be an intrinsic feature of the living, infinite universe. The seeds of life, actual living creatures and their DNA, flow throughout the cosmos and have taken root on innumerable worlds much older than our own. And these genetic seeds contain the DNA instructions for the metamorphosis of all life, including woman and man. And this is how life on our planet began. Life is an intrinsic feature of the living, infinite universe. The universe is alive and forever recycles and gives birth to planets, galaxies, and stars. Giant stars, incredibly vast in size, explode, giving birth to hundreds, even thousands of infant stars, which come to be ringed with living planets, many just like our own. And this is how our own story begins. Five billion years ago, a massive star circled by planets teeming with life exploded in a vast supernova, casting the shattered remnants of its solar system into the wilds of space. Trillions of tiny creatures and their DNA survived this cosmic cataclysm, frozen in oceans of ice and water, or buried deep within the mountains of planetary debris which were flung into the abyss. Innumerable microbes instantly reacted by forming heat shock proteins or cold shock proteins which wrap around and protect them, and then entered a state of dormancy, only to reawaken after millions of years had passed. Yet others continued to flourish and thrive buried miles beneath the surface of planetary debris. And then, after hundreds of millions of years, those who survived, or their progeny, were flung upon a new world, the Earth, and they went forth to multiply. Life on Earth came from other planets. The environment acts on gene selection, turning genes on and off, and bacteria labor to genetically engineer the environment in preparation for the next stage of metamorphosis. And they did this by converting minerals, enzymes, gases, nitrogen, sulfur, iron, hydrogen, and sunlight into forms which could be used to sustain the life of more complex creatures which had not yet been born. And the changing environment acted on gene selection, turning genes on and off, such that, after four billion years had passed, these tiny creatures and their DNA began to recreate and replicate increasingly complex creatures which long ago lived on other planets. The seeds of life flow throughout the cosmos and just as apple seeds contain the genetic DNA instructions for the growth and development of apple trees, these genetic seeds of life and their DNA contain the genetic instructions for the tree of life and the metamorphosis of all life which has taken root on this planet. Genes act on the environment, and the altered environment acts on gene selection, giving rise to a highly controlled and regulated stepwise progression of increasingly complex and intelligent creatures, the metamorphosis and replication of life forms that long ago lived on other, more ancient worlds. It is well established that this progression leading to humans is not random, but is unfolded according to the very precise ticking of the genetic clocks contained in the DNA of every single cell of every single organism on this planet. These genes did not evolve. The genes responsible for these new species were inherited from the first life forms to appear on Earth. Humans did not randomly evolve. The genetic instructions and the genetic code for the metamorphosis of humans was contained in the genetic libraries of the first creatures to appear on this planet. The Earth was genetically seeded to grow humans. 
The genetic seeds of life swarm throughout the cosmos, and species similar to those of Earth have evolved on innumerable worlds according to the same highly regulated DNA-based genetic instructions. On Earth, all living creatures possess DNA, which is structured, organized, and expressed in identical fashion regardless of species, according to a universal genetic code. Every creature which has appeared on Earth has been genetically coded. Broadly considered, genes can be divided into regulatory genes, such as introns, and protein coding genes, referred to as exons. Introns contain genes within genes and give birth to pre-coded regulatory genes which interact with the environment, turning protein coding genes, exons, on or off. Introns regulate and control gene expression, specifying which regions and how much of the genetic code should be expressed. DNA is the machinery of life and contains all the knowledge, information, and blueprints for creating the inner components of cells in every tissue of the body, be it human or worm. DNA is composed of nucleotides which are laddered together, forming base pairs alongside a backbone of complex sugars and phosphates. It is these nucleotides which contain the genetic codes for creating every component of every cell of every species which has ever walked, crawled, swam, or slithered across the earth. Introns specify and regulate how much of the genetic code should be activated. If the code is altered, lengthened or shortened, and if certain genes are turned on or off, a new species may be produced. Contrary to Darwin's theory, these genes did not randomly evolve, they were inherited. In fact, the emergence of new species did not coincide with the evolution of new protein coding genes, but alterations in regulatory genes which turn gene sequences on and off. Each strand of DNA is entwined together, forming a double helix. A single strand of DNA may consist of hundreds of thousands of base pairs. The human genome has approximately 3 billion base pairs of DNA. And yet, over 90% of the human genome is silent and has not yet been expressed, indicating that human metamorphosis is in its infancy and humans may continue to evolve according to pre-coded genetic instructions. For a single cell to grow requires DNA to unwind and to recreate itself and to create the proteins that make up every cell of the body. Contrary to Darwin's theory, there is nothing random about the organization and expression of DNA, which is under precise genetic regulatory control. Regulatory genes, such as introns, bracket various lengths of these nucleotides, forming functional domains, signaling how much of the genetic code is to be expressed. Functional domains are stretches of DNA within the genome that contain all the regulatory signals and other information necessary to activate or repress a particular gene. Each domain is an entity unto itself that is defined or bracketed by a boundary, much as words in a sentence are bracketed by punctuation marks. However, these are controlled by regulatory genes which turn these functional domains on or off. Many genes also have a protective protein coat and are covered with chromatin or substances such as DNA methylation, which inhibits gene expression. However, the environment also acts on the protein coats to turn genes on and off. Thus, as DNA genetically engineers the womb of the planet, Alterations in regulatory genes and changes in the environment can act on gene selection, turning inhibited genes on and others off, thereby giving rise to new species already pre-programmed into the genetic code. It is due to similar environmental DNA regulatory interactions which control gene expression and growth during development. By turning genes on and off creates a fetus, then a neonate, infant, child, adult, and the creation of different organs and tissues.
During gestation, the genes in our DNA are marked by a chemical coating called DNA methylation, which inhibits gene expression. These chemical codes are sensitive to the environment. This helps ensure that the right genes are expressed at the appropriate time and place as the womb and the internal environment of the fetus changes. Thus, a regulatory feedback system is established so that different functional domains, that is, different genes, get expressed at the right time. The same turning on and off of genes in response to a changing environment is also responsible for the emergence of increasingly complex species. However, instead of nine months, it takes billions of years, a process referred to as evolutionary metamorphosis. Genes giving rise to new species did not evolve. These genes have been conserved and passed along unchanged for hundreds of millions of years. Some of these genes were expressed and new species emerged only when a life-sustaining environment had been prepared for them. Genes act on the environment, biologically altering the environment, and the changed environment acts on gene selection, turning different genes on or off, thereby creating new species. Consider, for example, caterpillars who respond to the changing seasons and then modify their own external environment by fashioning a cocoon or chrysalis and emerge as a butterfly or a moth. The changing environment acts on regulatory genes and enables the caterpillar to create a specialized environment which acts on gene selection, then undergoes metamorphosis, undergoing a complete transformation such that the head becomes the tail and they grow wings and become a butterfly. However, if the metamorphosis from worm to butterfly took 500 million years instead of a single season, the Darwinians would claim this as evidence of genetic mutation and a random evolution, when in fact the entire process is under genetic control. The same principles apply to evolutionary metamorphosis. New species, including butterflies and humans, did not randomly evolve. They were pre-coded into silent genes which were inherited from tiny creatures who were among the first to arrive on Earth. These silent protein coding genes and the regulatory DNA which control them were passed along from generation to generation, waiting only a signal from the changing environment to become activated. These same genetic mechanisms gave rise to humans and enable a caterpillar to grow wings and fly. Algae were among the first life forms to take up residence on Earth. And the descendants of algae include seaweed and land-loving plants. Around 130 million years ago, two distinct species emerged simultaneously, flowering plants and mammals, both of which alter the environment and share many of the same genes. However, these genes did not randomly evolve, they were inherited. In fact, the same gene which is responsible for producing flowering petals, stamens and carpels in flowering plants, called the SEP gene, exists in a silent, non-activated form within the genomes of more primitive plants that possess only leaves. Professor Yanofsky of the University of California was able to activate these silent SEP genes to produce flowers and non-flowering plants, transforming a leaf into a flower. Contrary to Darwin's theory, flowers did not randomly evolve they were pre-coded into genes which were inherited. Algae gave rise to plants, leafless plants gave rise to leafy plants, and over a hundred million years later, leafy plants underwent metamorphosis and flowering plants blossomed across the earth. But first, the environment had to be genetically engineered and undergo significant changes to activate these genes and to sustain complex flowering plants. That altered environment included the metamorphosis of birds and flying insects. Animals, plants, insects, bacteria, and their genes act on the environment, and the altered environment acted on gene selection, switching on the silent SEP gene and producing petals, stamens, and carpels, and thus flowering plants.
These genes were inherited. They did not evolve. Consider the language gene, FOXP2, which plays a role in the expression and comprehension of human speech. The language gene did not randomly evolve. It was inherited. Non-human animals also possess the language gene. FOXP2, in fact, shows very little genetic variation across even distantly related vertebrates. And this includes reptiles, where that portion of the FOXP2 gene, which contributes to human speech, remains silent. Thus, humans did not evolve the language gene. Instead, they inherited the language gene, and it took only one amino acid to activate its contribution to human speech. Indeed, every gene in the human body was inherited, and this heritage can be traced back to the first creatures that appeared on this planet. Each species inherits the genetic information for the creation of the next species, and the exact same protein genes can be found in completely unrelated species. Depending on the species, some of these same genes are turned on and others turned off. Almost all aspects of evolutionary metamorphosis have been under genetic control. It is the inheritance and activation of protein coding genes and alterations in regulatory genes and the turning on and off of specific genes which accounts for the progression and for the stepwise emergence of increasingly complex and intelligent species perfectly adapted for the environment which had been created for them. One step leads to the next. Contrary to Darwin's theory, evolution is not random. Just as there is nothing random about the development of an embryo into a fetus into a neonate, into a baby, infant, child, adult. Development and evolutionary metamorphosis are under precise genetic regulatory control, with specific genes being turned on and off according to pre-coded genetic instructions and genes inherited from creatures who long ago arrived on Earth from other more ancient worlds. However, instead of nine months, it takes a billion years to grow a human. The expression of DNA and the stepwise progression leading from single-celled creatures to woman and man is also regulated and controlled by the ticking of various molecular clocks which turn different gene sequences on or off. Thus, precise predictions can be made as to exactly when specific species emerged in the past based on the precise and predictable ticking of these molecular genetic clocks which are under the control of regulatory genes. All creatures from human to fish, from redwood tree to bacteria, are related at the level of DNA which function and is expressed the same in all species according to a universal genetic code. Since the DNA of every living creature traces its origins back to the DNA of the first living things to appear on this planet, this indicates that the DNA of the first earthlings contain the genetic instructions for the metamorphosis of every creature that has swam, crawled, flown, wiggled, walked, or slithered across the earth, including woman and man. What some have called a random evolution is in fact the metamorphosis and replication of life forms that long ago lived on other planets. Our ancient ancestors journeyed here from the stars. Indeed, the seeds of life, actual living creatures and their DNA, flow throughout the cosmos, and this living cargo has probably been deposited on every moon and planet in the cosmos. Thus we can predict that the DNA of creatures that fell on other planets also contain the genetic potential for the creation of all manner of species, including humans. If true, this means that every living creature which has appeared on this planet, including woman and man, has evolved on innumerable worlds, including on planets much older than our own. Contrary to Darwinism, which is refuted by modern genetics and evidence of progress in the fossil record, random variations in mutation are sources of error and have little to do with evolution. Instead, mutations are the primary source of cancerous cell growth and abnormality. Although species may become more variable due to random variations or natural selection, random variation cannot give rise to improvements in design and function and cannot account for the predictable stepwise progression of increasing intelligence and capability. 
Random means random, without order or organization. If evolution were random, then why not dogs with human heads, sheep that sing opera, or humans evolving alongside dinosaurs? Evolution is not random, but organized and progressive, with one step logically leading to the next, according to pre-coded genetic instructions inherited from creatures who journeyed here from the stars. Likewise, random mutations cannot be responsible for the dramatic increases in complexity and the increasing speed and rapid pace of evolutionary metamorphosis over the last 500 million years. The constant complexity makes it very difficult to evolve a complicated trait by random mutations. This is because good mutations are rare and are diluted over time, whereas bad mutations are isolated to a single individual and lead to disease, disability, or death. Regulatory genes, in fact, resist mutations. There is nothing random about the expression of DNA or the genetic code. Good or bad, mutations are usually eliminated by genetic mechanisms and replaced by normal DNA. If a genetic mutation induced significant evolutionary change, that alteration would still be limited to a single individual who would become isolated and unable to breed unless numerous males and females experienced the same mutation, which is extremely unlikely. Rather, because the genes coding for new species are inherited, and since the environment acts on gene selection, this ensures that most members of the same species, living in the same changing environment, will undergo significant genetic alterations at the same time, and can therefore breed and propagate the new species who are already pre-adapted to that changing environment. The complexity and rapid evolutionary development of the human brain also defies Darwin's theory. Different regions of the brain control different functions. The more ancient brain areas, such as the limbic system, control what are called the four F's, feeding, fighting, fleeing, and sexual activity. However, contrary to Darwin's theory, over the course of evolution, the brain did not become more variable, but increasingly complex, mushrooming in size and forming what is called neocortex, new cortex, layers of gray matter consisting of billions of specialized cells that sit on top and commands the old brain. The neocortex is the seat of reasoning and intelligence, and has grown to its greatest size in humans, a function of precise DNA instructions contained in those genetic seeds of life which rained down upon the new earth over four billion years ago. DNA is intelligent. Our bodies and brains are DNA machines. DNA can learn and remember. DNA can reason and think. It is the DNA curled up within each and every cell of the brain which makes possible human intelligence and creativity. DNA is intelligent. Thus, in the unknown antiquity of the universe, and as the seeds of life spread throughout the cosmos, DNA learned, remembered, experimented, and planned, forming new memories, ancestral memories, retaining the impression and the genetic instructions for every creature produced on every planet over billions of years of time. DNA can learn and remember, and these DNA seeds of life have been transported from world to world by genetic interplanetary messengers, bacteria, and viruses. These genetic seeds of life and their DNA contain the genetic instructions for the tree of life and the metamorphosis of all life which has taken root on this planet. All scientists agree that bacteria were among the first living things to appear on Earth. And most scientists agree that all modern-day creatures trace their ancestry backwards in time to the DNA of these first earthlings. Bacteria not only possess the genetic potential for the creation of all subsequent species, but they transport genetic material between species and play a major role in evolutionary metamorphosis. 
But over the unknown eons extending interminably backwards in time, bacteria and viruses served as interplanetary genetic messengers, acquiring genetic memories and transferring DNA instructions between species living on different planets. And this was accomplished when microbes and viral agents were flung from world to world, buried within cosmic debris, meteors, asteroids, and comets following cosmic catastrophes. Cosmic collisions are commonplace, not only between meteors and planets, but entire galaxies. And with each collision, seeds of life and their DNA were cast upon new worlds, exchanging genetic memories, and they learned. Bacteria not only possessed the genetic potential for the creation of all subsequent species, but they play major roles in coordinating the stepwise progression leading to humans, and they accomplished this by transferring and inserting genetic material into the genomes of targeted host species, thereby triggering the next stage of metamorphosis. In fact, a significant amount of DNA in the genomes of corn, wheat, mice, and men are the result of horizontal gene transfer from bacteria. These inserted genes serve regulatory functions and turn genes on and off within the host. These genes can be passed on through progeny for hundreds of millions or even billions of years, only to be expressed when exposed to the right environment. Bacteria can in fact insert the genes for the creation of a completely different organism into the genome of a host species. Thus the host will contain two genomes, one which belongs to a completely different species, only to be expressed when exposed to the right environment. In fact, not just bacteria, but retroviruses act as engines of evolutionary change. Some viruses transfer regulatory genes between species. Viruses are not alive and require a living host to reproduce. Generally, when a virus invades a cell, it hijacks the host's genetic machinery, which produces numerous copies of the viral genome, causing the infection to spread. However, the viral genome will die when the host cell dies. By contrast, a retrovirus does not die with the host. Instead, it will insert all or part of their genome into the genome of the host species, including humans. These inserted genes can also be inherited by the offspring of the host and passed down through future and subsequent generations. There they remain until exposed to a specific environment. Wait. Endogenous retroviruses can alter gene function and genome structure of the infected host. Because they insert regulatory genes, they can influence the future evolution of their host species and their progeny, and thus the emergence of new species. Endogenous retroviruses, these interplanetary genetic messengers, also played a significant role when they infected and inserted regulatory genes into the primate genome about 40 million years ago. Subsequently, this specific primate lineage gave rise to monkeys, which split into two lineages, Old World monkeys and New World monkeys, about 30 million years ago. Presumably, the regulatory genes inserted by this retrovirus 
acted on gene selection by turning specific genes on or off. However, those viruses which engineered the monkey genome were joined by yet other viruses about 20 million years ago. And these inserted viral regulatory genes are associated with the metamorphosis of apes. The insertion of specific ERVs, endogenous retroviruses, are specific to certain species and they can significantly influence the next stage of metamorphosis, after which they drop out, are replaced, or jump to a different position within the genome. In fact, human regulatory genes can also change position, as well as give birth to new genes, thereby coordinating gene expression in different regions of the genome. Endogenous retroviruses, such as the one called PTRV1, although integrated as part of the germline of Old World monkeys and African great apes, these genes dropped out of the lineage leaning directly to humans. Thus, the elimination of this retrovirus is related to the emergence of modern humans. For example, around 5 million years ago, coinciding with the emergence of the first prehumans, some ERVs jumped to new positions throughout the prehuman genome and spread numerous copies of repetitive DNA sequences. This directly affected a gene called P53, transforming it into a master regulatory gene that established a gene regulatory network in a very short evolutionary time frame contributing to many features and traits which are uniquely human. Thus, by inserting DNA sequences, retroviruses can rearrange the genome, which leads to changes in gene regulation and expression, and thus the development of new traits and even new species. 8% of the human genetic code consists of genes inserted by endogenous retroviruses. Some are unique to humans, yet others were inserted in primates around 40 million years ago, but jumped to new positions, genetic events which coincided with the emergence of new species and leading to the first species of pre-humanity. It can be assumed that these retroviruses obtained these regulatory genes from primate species which long ago lived on other worlds. Because viruses are not alive, they can't die. They are the perfect vehicle for spreading infections and transferring genetic information within and between species, including those living on other worlds. Indeed, for thousands of years, it has been believed that comets and meteors harbor infective agents that periodically contaminate the Earth. However, like bacteria, viruses not only sicken and kill, but serve as genetic messengers and engines of metamorphosis and may infect every planet and moon in the cosmos. Our ancient ancestors journeyed here from the stars. And their DNA contained the genetic instructions for the metamorphosis of all life, replicating and reproducing creatures who long ago lived on other planets. And those inhabitants of ancient stars included humans. The Earth was genetically seeded to grow human intelligence. Thus, five million years ago, 4.5 billion years after the first microbes arrived on Earth, these genetic seeds began to sprout the first prehumans, and the pace of evolutionary metamorphosis began to speed up. The netherworld of change was found where the trees and the forest came to an end, and the grassy savannas began. The earth began to warm, and the changing environment and regulatory genes acting on gene selection in accordance with pre-programmed genetic instructions gave rise to a wide range of pre-human species, collectively referred to as Australopithecus around 3.5 million years ago, followed by Homo habilis a million years later. By two million years ago, and with almost a dozen species almost exactly like them, they began to lumber across the earth. It is as if the earth had been genetically seeded to grow humans. Due to these pre-programmed genetic instructions, coupled with the influences of retroviruses and regulatory genes turning other genes on and off, human evolution suddenly speeded up. 
Regulatory genes involved in brain development began turning on an increasing number of genes and the human brain mushroomed in size. However, so did the number of pre-human species. For different and distinct species of humanity often shared the planet at the same time. There followed a progression of ancestral branching, giving rise to different species of humanity, each more intelligent and with a bigger brain than their ancestors. Just as the fetus becomes the neonate, which becomes the child, which becomes the adult, the human body and brain develop in successive orderly stages, from Australopithecus to Homo habilis to Homo erectus to Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon, each successive species more intelligent and with a bigger, more complex brain. Within the short span of two million years, the brain in fact doubled in size and nearly a dozen distinct species of humanity and pre-humanity began to overrun the planet. As recently as 30,000 years ago, at least three unique and genetically distinct species of human were sharing the planet, Homo erectus, Neanderthal, and Cro-Magnon, only one of which survived, giving rise to modern woman and man. However, this rapid rate of human metamorphosis was not due to the evolution of new genes. Instead, old genes and large networks of genes inherited from ancient ancestors and which had been silent and had not been expressed were switched on with the emergence of the first prehumans. These regulatory genes increased their activity, then accelerated their activity, switching on larger gene networks that control the brain. In fact, regulatory genes which controlled the expression of other genes were four times as likely to have changed their own expression patterns once humans began to evolve. Because they influenced the activity of many downstream genetic targets, small changes in the expression of these regulatory genes can have enormous impact. By contrast, these same regulatory genes and gene networks are relatively silent in the monkey and ape genomes. However, retroviruses, in conjunction and coinciding with other pre-programmed genetic mechanisms controlling human metamorphosis, may have again played a significant role. Thus, after all these species diverged, the evolution of the human brain speeded up, and this is paralleled not only by increases in the activation of genes and gene activity levels, but in the size of the human brain. In fact, the evolution of humans has speeded up and developed at a faster pace compared to other species. Moreover, the human brain evolved faster than the human body, and at an accelerated pace as compared to the brains of all other species, including our closest genetic relative, the chimpanzee. This is significant for the lineage leaning to chimpanzees versus humans, split around five million years ago and chimps and humans are almost 99% genetically identical. It's as if the Earth has been genetically seeded with the DNA instructions to grow human intelligence and to rapidly increase that intelligence, leaving all other species far behind, including our closest genetic relatives. For example, although humans weigh about 20% more than chimpanzees, the brain weighs 250% more. Humans have an exceptionally big brain relative to their body size. Much of the increase in size occurred in the neocortex and the frontal lobes. This is significant as the frontal lobes are the senior executive of the brain and personality, controlling logic, thinking, reasoning, judgment, and analytical skills, as well as insight, creativity, and the ability to make long-term plans and to think of multiple plans simultaneously. Likewise, the neocortex, the outer part of the brain associated with language, thought, reasoning, and analytical skills, has greatly grown in size. Thus, the frontal lobe and the neocortex are three times larger in the human versus the chimpanzee brain. In addition, the number of introns in the human genome has increased, whereas in species who stopped evolving, introns have dropped out. Introns are regulatory genes and they contain genes within genes. The abundance of introns in the human genome indicates that human evolution may continue to speed up and that humans of the future will have a more powerful brain and greatly enhanced intellectual skills. It would be a mistake to assume that the process of evolutionary metamorphosis stops with modern day humans. 
Humans, which are in fact DNA machines, are also dramatically altering the environment, as well as purposely modifying and acting on gene selection with the hope of creating, for example, designer babies, which will be more handsome, beautiful, athletic, and intelligent than their parents. It could be assumed with continued scientific advances, the children of these children, the children of these designer babies, would do the same, which leads to an interesting thought experiment. Consider the incredible pace of scientific discovery over the course of the last 100 years. If humans do not become extinct and continue to make scientific and technological discoveries and eventually learn to design more intelligent babies, what might humans be like a thousand years from now? Or 10,000 years from now? What about a million years from now? Humans a million years from now may be so scientifically, neurologically, and genetically advanced that intellectually, present-day humans might seem like monkeys in comparison. The seeds of life swarm throughout the cosmos, and identical DNA-based life forms have probably been flung upon the surface of every planet and moon in the universe. On Earth, the stepwise progression which has led from simple multicellular animal to fish, to amphibian, reptile, reptile mammal, therapsid, mammal, primate, including women and men, has taken place over the course of the last billion years. This entire progression has been under genetic control, involving pre-programmed genetic environmental interactions with multiple species. Thus, using the Earth as an example, it is reasonable to assume that the same stepwise progression of evolutionary metamorphosis has occurred and continues to unfold in every galaxy and on every planet capable of sustaining complex DNA-based life. Given the unknown antiquity of the cosmos, then humans may have long ago evolved on ancient worlds that are billions of years older than our own, and they may be far in advance of those of Earth. And it could be expected that the humans on those worlds billions of years older than the Earth might have continued to evolve and may have continued to advance scientifically and intellectually. Given that this corner of the universe, our galaxy, is at least 13 billion years old, whereas our planet is 4.5 billion years young, whereas around 90% of the human genome is silent and has not yet been expressed, this suggests that the evolution of the human brain and mind, and thus human intelligence, may be in its infancy. Considering the following, the modern human brain consists of six distinct layers of neocortex, called new cortex, which covers the old brain. Only mammals have neocortex, and has grown to its largest and thickest size in the human brain. The neocortex covers the old brain, and is the seed of human intelligence, including the ability to use language, and to read, write, perform complex mathematical equations, and to create technologically and scientifically advanced inventions. As the thickness of the neocortex and capabilities of the brain and neocortex have increased over time, reaching its current maximum in the human brain, and as so much genetic potential is yet to be expressed, the brain of the future may contain eight layers of neocortex, or ten layers, or twelve layers, and so on, compared to the six layers of the modern human brain. Or consider the frontal and temporal lobes, which govern reasoning, thinking, memory, judgment, creativity, problem solving, religious experience, and the ability to consider multiple possibilities simultaneously. Over the course of evolution, the frontal and temporal lobes have increased in size. Thus, in the future, coupled with genetic engineering, the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain may also expand, conferring incredibly enhanced intellectual, cognitive, and psychic capabilities. We have asked what might be the intellectual, technological, and scientific capabilities of humans a million years from now. What about a billion years? What about 10 billion years from now? They might appear to us as gods, even if they're still human. Even the gods may have gods. Hundreds of planets have been detected orbiting distant stars in our galaxy. Some are in their infancy, such as the many planets orbiting HR 8799 and Fomalhaut, stars which are 60 million and 200 million years young, respectively. These include Osiris, also known as planet HD 20945HB, which is orbiting a star lying 150 light years from Earth. 
Some are Earth-like with a rich atmosphere of oxygen, carbon, and water, the essential ingredients for the sustenance and metamorphosis of carbon-based life. The origin, age, and extent of the universe is unknown. However, we know there are planets in our own Milky Way galaxy, at least one of which is 13 billion years old. By contrast, the Earth is only 4.6 billion years young. What might be the scientific, technological, and intellectual capabilities of humans who began to evolve 13 billion years ago, who may have reached our own level of capability 5 billion years before the Earth was formed, and who have had almost 10 billion years more to develop and advance? These technologically advanced humans may appear to us as gods, even if they are still human. Given the unknown age of the universe, and the fact that there may be untold ancient galaxies and worlds teeming with life, it may be that even those who might appear to us as gods may also have gods who have gods. Even the gods may have gods, a progression of evolutionary development which may make us look like insects in comparison. And what are the powers of humans who have become as gods? What might be the creative, scientific, technological, and intellectual capabilities of beings who began to evolve tens of billions of years ago, and who may have long ago engineered their own DNA, creating designer babies, and enhanced their own brains and intellectual abilities long before the Earth was even formed? It is beyond our comprehension. The seeds of life and their DNA flow throughout the cosmos, and these genetic seeds took root on Earth, genetically engineering the environment, replicating and recreating creatures that long ago lived on more ancient worlds. Over 90% of the human genome is silent and has not yet been expressed, indicating that humans will continue to evolve and the human mind and brain are in their infancy. Thus, having descended from the same DNA, we were not only created in the genetic image of the gods, but of the genetic potential to be as gods. For the humans of Earth have not yet reached childhood's end and have not yet fulfilled their genetic potential. Indeed, science marches on, and so does human metamorphosis the replication and recreation of complex, intelligent creatures that long ago lived on other planets. <laughs>